you do everything. You have an album, you have a book, you have a Joe's Pub show, you have a Tony nomination, and like movies. You've like done everything, I feel. And I love it. I haven't worked in cir- No, I have worked in the circus. No, I've done really? a lot of stuff. Yeah, I've, let me put my arm oh, up here. Oh, there we go. Honey. We'll get very comfortable. Because I need to lean. Um, no, I'm trying to think what I haven't done. Well, I'm sure there's something. Right now you're doing a show at Joe's Pub. What yes. is that all about? Uh, Mix America. Okay. It's a show in which I'm the only contestant, but everyone's a winner. <laughs> And there you have <laughs> And uh, when is that running? It's running it currently. runs weekends in March. It closes March 30th. Okay, so weekends in March, closes March mm-hmm. 30th. So go to Joe's Pub. You can get tickets on uh, Joe's Pub's website. Right. Well, the thing sure. is, the idea of the show is my friend Billy's father had this great line, which is uh, the, you, you can measure the, uh, the depth of a person's tragedy by the amount of space between how they see themselves and how they're seen by others. And so as a trans person and as an American, you know, both of those things can uh, be confusing to people Mm -hmm. because I think a lot of Americans see themselves, uh, see Americans in one way, in a way that a lot of people in other countries don't. And Mm -hmm. so that causes confusion or problems for us. And also for trans people, we see ourselves in a way uh, and sometimes we wish to be seen in a way that, other than that, the one that other people see us in. Yeah. So uh, I thought that was an interesting uh, concept or an idea on which to create a cabaret show. And there you go. <laughs> now you grew up. You're from my home state, Maryland. Maryland. But you grew up right. on the the western shore. Uh, and well, there the is no shore. shore on the west. Well, yeah. It just it's. The Potomac Baltimore. River. Yeah, yeah. That's a shore. That's, yeah, that's a little beach western there, I guess. Maryland. Yeah, I grew up in the. Um, you know, Appalachia. Mm. So what was that like growing up? Because I know for me, I grew up on a farm on the Eastern Shore, and mm-hmm. I felt very, like, uh, not part of that. No, it's very you know, Like, I didn't fit in. I was, very, you know, I was like a little lady boy just running around the cornfields. Right. You know, I well, that was how out. I was. My grandparents had a farm. Yeah. And uh, I felt that way... Uh, and I felt very isolated, and I spent a lot of time running around climbing trees, but I also had a best girlfriend, and um, I spent a lot of time, you know, just hanging out in her room reading books and listening to music and dreaming of what my life would be like someday when I was able to get out of town and get away. And um, when, did you get out, when did you get away? When I graduated from high school on a Monday, and I was going on Thursday. Really? Did you yes. move to New York right away? I went to Bethany Beach, Delaware for the summer. Did you really? Mm-hmm. I went to Rehoboth and Dewey for a week, and then I moved to New York. No, I worked Rehoboth. at a church camp a ch- in um, Bethany really? Beach, Delaware. What was that for like? For the summer <laughs> after high school. It was great. I mean, I uh, loved the beach. I loved yeah. the people that I worked with. I didn't really... Uh, no one sort of hassled me. We... Mm-hmm drank a lot and danced a lot and at that time uh, if you were 18 you could uh, legally drink oh yeah so uh, I worked in a church camp and we'd get off work at 7 you'd and teach the good book and then you'd and, get drunk and then I didn't teach I was the cook <laughs> oh! <laughs> so I worked in the kitchen with all the bad kids and we were like smoking and drinking and partying oh, and um, you know uh, it was a great summer actually it was a great transitional summer from my really conservative mm-hmm. small town to New York it was like a stepping stone into like the real well I had to make world. money yeah. and uh, I had I had started school with a hell of a tan yeah, it looks great you looked great it mm-hmm. looked great so then <laughs> after a summer at the beach you know yeah so when did um, when did you start performing like when did that when did that all start to I started performing when I was a baby Mm-hmm. Um, my first performance was when I was 18 months old. I started talking now. <laughs> and when I was 18 months old, I was in the church Christmas pageant. Oh. And I said, I can wish you, though I'm small, Merry Christmas, one and all. Oh. And after <laughs> that, I, I still am known for my Christmas shows. The Christmas shows, yeah. So, yeah. I do like a holiday extravaganza. Uh, and so, like, uh, throughout the years, you... Uh, you know, you, you've become, uh, to me, like, this legendary performer, and you have a Tony nomination for your character of Kiki that you developed over, like, a long, a long, long time, time right? right? Like, how did that uh, come, to, come to be? Well, I started uh, Kiki in San Francisco, and she was uh, a sort of a combination of a lot of different things. I didn't really expect Kiki and Herb to go as far as it did. Um, my goal was to uh, 
make a name for myself uh, doing off Broadway. Mm -hmm. And we uh, did Kiki and Herb at the Cherry Lane in 2003. And um, we'd already won an OB and a Bessie for other shows that mm -hmm. we'd done, but I had this thing in my head that I wanted to do an off Broadway show. So we did it at the Cherry Lane, and it was directed by Scott Elliott mm -hmm. and. Um, Derek McLean, who just did the sets for the Oscars, did our yeah. set. It was really great. It was really um, satisfying, but it was hard work. And at the end of that, I just didn't want to do Kiki and Herb anymore. You were like, done. I was like, I'm done. No more. And uh, I was going to go to grad school in London. And uh, Jared Geller and David Fro Foster, who are these producers, had mm -hmm. a meeting with us. And they said, uh, well... Uh, what what would you what would you want to do with Kiki and Herb going forward? I was like, well, maybe you know, one off concerts. I'm not doing a big theatrical run. Yeah. that's just a, a pain. Special and it has to be a special again. event. And they said, well, well, where? And I was <laughs> like, I'm gonna just say something ridiculous because I don't want <laughs> to do this anymore. So I said, oh well, if you get us a gig at Carnegie Hall, we'll do it. They said, okay. And they did. And you got and to get so Carnegie then Hall. we did Carnegie Hall. Then uh, it, that made it go on a little, yeah. you know, a little while longer. And then we, I went to grad school in London. I took time off when we toured the UK opening for the Scissor Sisters. That was mm. huge. And then uh, came back and I had to pay my college bills. So they were, were like, oh, we God. want you to do Broadway. And I was like, I don't want to do Broadway. They said, uh, well... You know, we talked about it, and I said, I will do Broadway, but I don't want to do it for more than three weeks. <laughs> and so we ended up doing it for five weeks. For five weeks. And then we were nominated for a Tony. And then um, uh, after that, we toured around a little, and then our final New, uh, New York show was our second Carnegie Hall Christmas oh, wow. show. And I think that was 2000. Was that the last time you seven. did the character? The last time I did the character was last summer. I um, went out on stage with the Scissor Sisters. Oh, I saw that. That's right, I saw that on Kiki. YouTube. And I went out as Kiki and died. Because I'd never officially died before. Kiki I mean, never died. Kiki, well, I mean, and if you know the story mm. of Kiki and Herb, you know she can't really die. But uh, she was. She died on she stage. She died on that stage with the Scissor Sisters. Yeah. Because I was like, this is too scary and freaky. I'm not doing it again. Yeah. Well, I just, that's what I love about you. You know, you kind of just like put something out there and like a goal and you just like do it. Yeah, it's weird. I'm kind of like that. I need a new goal right now. I'm trying to figure out what that is. I love Because I just put my you. perfume out. I had my yeah. book out. I did all these things and I had put out two records. I mean, I didn't put out my records until I was in my late 40s. Oh, yeah. And so uh, I did two records in the last two years and I did a book and a perfume and so. Ooh, that bright light just that's came bright, in. It just came in. That's God shining on us. All that's the like, glory. Oh, I feel like Marilyn. I'm all <laughs> pale and washed out. Uh, you know, because the series is about like coming out and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So what is like, I always see like tweeting, you're going to go visit your, your family. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your, what is your family's take on, on your life and your career and, and where you're at? And well, what I... What is that experience like? It's been an, a difficult journey with them. And, uh, you know... It's, I, my experience in my life is so alien to them, and it's like, you know, I grew up around them, so I sort of understand them, and I know what they're like, mm -hmm. but they don't really, um, they, I mean, I'm an abstraction to them, so mm -hmm. it's a constant, uh, I mean, it's been, it requires a lot of patience, mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to, you know, be more aggressive, and you have to be there for them, and sometimes you have to take space for yourself to sort of nurture your mm -hmm. own your own self and your own space and, and to feel comfortable in order to maybe re-engage with them later. So right now I'm taking a little break. Little it's break. me time. Yeah, to just kind of like regroup. Yeah, yeah, and I think, you know, that's important because uh, a lot of people feel like uh, they have to sacrifice their happiness for their family. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that's really... Um, necessary because your family isn't sacrificing their happiness for you. I like that. Yeah, that's I mean, a lot of times when you are the you're the queer one, you feel it's up to you to compensate, but in fact, it's not. Mm. So it's a, you know, you have to meet each other in the middle and if they're not capable of meeting you in the middle, then you might need to pull back and just take care of yourself. And I think that's an important thing because while everyone says it gets better, it gets better. 
you can get better, but you can't guarantee the people around you are going to yeah. get better. You can't cha- necessarily change like your your family's viewpoint, but you can no. nurture yourself and care you can for play the role you want to play in your life. But you can't necessarily cast the people around you to play the role that you want them to play. And your family tries to do that with you, and that's not fair either. I always ask the question, what is, like, your bit of advice? And I think you just, like, answered it just <laughs> on your own. Just I guess. talking uh, like that. I think that's so beautiful, just, like, to nurture Yeah, yourself. you have to nurture yourself. And so I think that's important, and I'm doing that. And it, it feels good. Yeah, I remember when I first started performing... Uh, outside of, like, musical theater or whatever and trying to do this, like, uh, work that I do now, I was like, oh, what are, like, my brothers going to think? What are my parents going to think? And all this stuff. And then I was like, well, am I, I'm happy when I when I throw on a heel, a six-inch heel, and, a, mm-hmm. and, like, a little skirt. It's like, that's when I'm the most happy. Right. right. Like, they so should like, be happy that yeah. you're happy. And they, it my, shouldn't be about what they think. It should be about the fact that they care yeah. about you in there. That's what makes me most happy. And my parents come to the show, they think I'm a little vulgar. But uh, they <laughs> enjoy it overall, Yeah, I mine think. too. Mine yeah. have problems with language and whatever. Yeah, my mom doesn't think... I talk very openly about, like, my sex life on stage, and my mom is like, well, I don't know if you need to be saying all of that. She's right. like, you look well, you're great. Right. Whose mom wants but, to know that? Yeah, she I don't want to know about She doesn't want to know all of that. Life. But uh, she gets jealous of it. She wants me to give, like, hand-me-down dresses to her now. Mm. We're the same size. Oh, that's but, nice. Yeah, so that's, like, a, a developed a new relationship. Which <laughs> 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 is just nice. That's sweet. Yeah, but it's true. It's like, you know, it's like I was very, like, nervous and insecure about that. Like, is this, like, is this... What was my family going to think? But mm-hmm. then it's like, well, I'm very comfortable and happy and I remember when I was first starting to do it I was going to show down at the duplex and this is the first time we met you came to the show mm-hmm. and I was so nervous to have you in the audience because it was my first time like and I you know still very like didn't really know how to do my makeup it was very very <laughs> fresh and new and uh and I was so nervous to have you in the audience but you were so gracious and so sweet well and, like, it was fantastic you were great right. thank you well it's like you're such a role model to me like you Alan Cumming Liza Minnelli <laughs> like, I got my hair blown out for Liza's birthday tonight it, yeah, well her birthday was yesterday so she's celebrating tonight mm-hmm. I'm gonna crash the party do it no, I love her I, did, I sang I, to her on her 60th birthday really mm-hmm. I fun. just think she's the most you're going to the concert at Town Hall right tomorrow tomorrow going to the party tonight concert tomorrow oh I love that the live and then live. my show on the weekend. and then your show on the weekend mm-hmm. so I uh, thank you for sitting down with me my I pleasure it. oh and also tell people I'm gonna be turning 600 I'm counting in months and May I'm months. gonna be 600 months old and uh, <laughs> and I'm having birthday concerts at the Great American Music Hall in San Francisco May 5th and at uh, Le Poisson Rouge in New York May 10th so I'll go to that come to the uh, birthday concert we'll post little links to that and you can see uh, the show at Joe's Pub through March 30th and you can get my perfume The Afternoon of a Fawn on my website justinbond.com and the book and the album and all of that and all of that so now we've got I need a new fragrance. our crass commercialism I need a new fragrance. yeah <laughs> our well thank you so much for sitting with me your hair thank looks you. great Liza Thanks. will love it and uh, we'll post links to all of that so uh Yay, bye!